today we're going to continue our study into Paul's second missionary journey. So I hope you remembered uh, what we did last week. Uh, we looked at the entire missionary journey uh, and a few things that we realized uh, is that uh, there are many instances where Paul was stopped. Okay, uh, Paul was stopped from going to different places and in the end he went to an entirely new region altogether. Okay, uh, which was uh, which was actually, if you think about it, uh, that region, okay, uh, Macedonia, uh, which we are talking about. Uh, sorry, apa? Uh, Macedonia, which we are talking about last week, okay, is actually situated in Europe. Okay, so everything that we've been discussing so far is what we know today as uh, the Middle East or still part of Asia. Lah. But Macedonia, Italy, Rome, all these places are in Europe. Okay, and so we find that in Paul's second missionary journey, uh, he has, uh, through the Holy Spirit's leading, uh, he has moved not just uh, around uh, the, the Middle Eastern area, the Syrian-Palestine area, but he has gone to Europe, okay, across the sea over to Macedonia, which is a part of Europe. Okay, and of course, you know, in the third and the fourth missionary journey, he also does the same thing. In the fourth one, he goes to Rome, lah, okay, which is in Italy, which is definitely in Europe. Okay, so uh, let's have this in mind as we look into Acts chapter 16 today. Um, because Acts chapter 16 is, uh, most of the important events are focused in this one particular city in Acts chapter 16. But the road to getting there Okay, the road to getting there uh, is uh, uh, is also detailed, lah, okay, in Acts chapter 16. Okay, so let's begin our study today uh, by committing ourselves to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we are thankful that uh, you have brought us through another week. We are thankful for uh, the life that we can have and every day that you have made for us. We thank you for keeping us safe and we pray, O oh Lord, that even as we commit ourselves to uh, studying your word for the next two hours, we pray that you will be with us. Help us, Lord, to be mindful uh, of what we are studying and help us to remember uh, all that we are studying, uh, not just for the exams, O oh Lord, but also for life as well. Help us to apply what we learn in our lives, even as we uh, study your word. Speak to us, O oh Lord in your own personal and powerful way, through the guidance of your Holy Spirit. Be with us, we pray, all this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so let's begin by looking at uh, where we left off, uh, okay, in Acts chapter 15. Okay, so in Acts chapter 15, we the second missionary journey starts off in Antioch in Syria. Okay, and in Antioch in Syria, we find out that, uh, we find out from last week's class, huh, that Paul and Barnabas had separated. Barnabas brought this person called John Mark, okay, with them to Cyprus, okay, and Paul chose this person called Silas. Silas, who we first saw in the Jerusalem Council, he went together with Judas uh, to Antioch in Syria, uh, and he remained there. Lah. And Paul chose this person, Silas, um, Partially, okay, partially because Silas was also a Roman citizen, okay, and I suspect that Paul chose Silas also because Silas was, you know, he proved to be dependable, okay, and we find that after Paul and Barnabas separated, we don't know much about what happened to Barnabas, okay, we assume that he has gone to other places to spread the gospel, and so a good thing, although it was a bad thing that they fought, Okay, it was a bad thing that they, you know, they argued with one another and they fought. Uh, but the good thing that came out of it was uh, that there were now two missionary journeys in this one. Okay, but we only focus on the one that involves Paul. Okay, so the first place they went to was in the district uh, or the regions of Syria and Cilicia. Okay, remember uh, Cilicia, not Sicilia. <laughs> okay, and uh, they traveled there to strengthen the churches over there. Okay, and then in after they finished through the region of Cilicia, they went on to the towns of Derby and Lystra. Okay, and they traveled uh, by land rather than sea. Like, instead of going by sea, which was how they did in the first one, they went through by land. Okay, and because of that, they had to go through this mountainous area, okay, which is called the Taurus Mountain. Okay, and 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 this is where our reading starts. Like. Okay, this is where our reading starts. 
uh, just as a reminder, okay, uh, how many of you can tell me what happened to Paul in Lystra the last time? Do you remember? <laughs> He's stoned by the, by the people. Okay, they were stoned by the people, but Paul didn't die. Yeah? Okay, in, instead, what happened? After he was stoned, and people thought he died. What happened actually? He got up. Mm. He got up. Okay, he got up. That's a very interesting thing. Uh. You stone, uh, you, people throw stones at you, uh, and people think that you died. Uh. But actually, no, he got up. Okay, but he didn't just get up. Uh, okay, he also got up. Okay, he got up and he went to the city again, you know. You know, if people were to attack you in the one city, right, would you actually go back to the same place? Because you know that there are people out there that are gunning for you. There are people out there that are like, okay, if Paul comes back the next time, uh, this time we must make sure that he dies. <laughs> the first time he didn't die. We thought that he died, but he didn't die. But Paul went back the second time. You know? Okay, Actually, Paul went back to Lystra the second time, and this is probably his third time visiting Lystra. Okay, The first time and the second time was in the second missionary, uh, first missionary journey. The third time is now in this second missionary journey. Okay, which is pretty amazing. You know, if I were Paul, I wouldn't go back. <laughs> I wouldn't want to go back to a place where I knew that if I go there, I might die. Okay, but Paul did. Okay, Paul did now, and it really speaks volumes about who Paul is. Lah. Okay, Paul is somebody that has courage, and not only that, he is definitely very committed. His tenacity is very important to us. Okay, Paul risked his life for the believers. To make sure that they were growing in their faith. Remember that he's going back to visit these places because the first time he went there, okay, he was preaching the gospel. But the second and the third time he goes there is no longer to preach the gospel but to strengthen the church that is already in the town. And this seems to be the pattern of Paul's work. Okay, whenever Paul, Paul, whenever Paul goes to a place for a first time, okay, he will go to the synagogue. And then he will preach the gospel. Okay, he will preach the good news, and uh, and then there will be, of course, people who believe and people who don't believe. Huh? But the people who believe huh, will form the church. Okay, and Paul then goes back the second time, not to preach again, but to strengthen the churches. Sorry, not to share the gospel again to other people, but to strengthen the church so that they can go and share about the gospel to other people. Okay, and Paul going back, uh, if you think about it, does he really need to go back? Actually, maybe he does not even need to go back. But the fact that he went there for the purpose of strengthening the churches is very important. Okay, it shows uh, that, you know, let's say if you have a friend and... Uh, uh, so, you know, when I was much, when I was much, much younger, <laughs> okay, I used to go for all these church events. And I don't know how many of you have these kind of events in your church. Lah. So, you know, you have these church events and then the pastor too, uh, ramai ramai, uh, there'll be a lot of people, you know, when the, when the person at the, at, when the speaker uh, asks people to raise their hands, who wants to receive Jesus Christ, you know, there'll be a lot of people raising their hands. You know, and so when I was younger, I used to go to all these things, lah, you know, and, um, uh, and I see, I see, I, I mean, I notice sometimes when I go and I'm just looking at people, uh, I notice that sometimes uh, there are some people that have already, you know, have already raised their hands to accept the Lord Jesus Christ. And then they go for another meeting and then they raise their hands again, you know. And then I see them at another meeting and then they are also raising their hands again. So I'm like, why is this person uh, like they balik balik want to accept Jesus Christ? Like, you know, the, like the first time, tidak jadi ka? Atau, you know, the second time, like, Oh, maybe he prayed, but tidak jadi. He doesn't feel that Jesus is in his heart. Okay, and that's where I realize uh, that it is not just enough uh, to bring somebody to know the Lord. It is not just enough uh, to share the gospel. And if the person believes, uh, then lepas kamu habis doakan, congratulations, you're not a Christian. And then kasih biar saja begitu. Okay, follow up is very important. Okay, the ministry of going back to the person that you brought to Christ the ministry of you know following up ma, with the person that has just come to know the lord is a very important ministry and paul shows us this okay paul shows us uh, that you know even though he started a church even though a church was started and a few people 
uh, you know, there were a few people who believed him the first time he went there. He didn't just, now, okay, kamu sudah percaya, bahkan, bah, good, my job is done. No. Okay, in fact, his job was not done. His job had only just begun. By going back to the churches, he wanted to make sure that they were still, you know, they still believed in the Lord Jesus, that they were going strong, and that they were, you know, they were still faithful to the Lord. Okay, and this is a very important thing. Okay, my friends, next time, if you bring somebody to come to know the Lord, if you share the gospel with somebody, yeah, when that person believes, okay, or if that person believes, okay, rejoice because it is the work of the Holy Spirit, okay, that brings that person to believe. But your job is not over. Okay, just because that person believes, huh, doesn't mean that you can lepas tangan daripada dia. Okay, the fact that you are the one that shared the gospel with that person, okay, also means that you have a responsibility, yeah, to make sure that he also grows. Okay, so, uh, so remember Paul. Okay, remember Paul. The next time, you know, if you ever have this chance, you know, to share the gospel, and you bring somebody to come to know the Lord. Okay, make sure you follow up with them, because nobody likes to be left alone uh, when they are new to something. All right. Okay, so let's all read together. Um, can we start with um, since? <laughs> Since Nicholas is here, okay, I'm oh, I'm so glad to see you here, Nicholas. Since Nicholas is here, let's start with Nicholas. Uh, reading from chapter 16. Uh, okay, reading from chapter 16, um, verse 1 to 5. Can I have Nicholas to read all five? Because Nicholas, we rarely hear your voice. Paul travelled on to Derby and Lystra, where a Christian named Timothy lived. His mother, who was also a Christian, was Jewish, but his father was a Greek. All the believers in Lystra and Iconium spoke well of Timothy. Paul wanted to take Timothy along with him, so he circumcised him. He did so because all the Jews who lived in those places knew that Timothy's father was Greek. So they went through the towns they delivered to the believers the rules decided upon by the apostles and elders in Jerusalem, and they told them to obey these, those rules. So the churches were made stronger in the faith and grew in number every day. Okay, thank you. Uh, very nicely read. Okay, uh, so there are two very important things. Okay, there are two very important things that happen here. Uh, not so much very important events, okay, but it's just like passing through events. Lah. We know that Timoth uh, Paul, okay, Paul and Silas uh, went to uh, Lystra. Okay, sorry, Derby and Lystra. Okay, but uh, the two things that happen over there is number one, the introduction of this person called Timothy. Okay, and uh, we find that Timothy's hometown, uh, okay, is actually in Lystra. Okay, although Derby is mentioned first, okay, although Derby is mentioned first, okay, but it seems uh, that the people in Lystra actually knew him. So we tend to believe that uh, Timothy actually originated uh, or you know, he was, his hometown is in uh, Lystra. Okay, now if you read in the book of 2 Timothy, uh, okay, uh, the book of 2 Timothy in your Bible, you will also find uh, that uh, Timothy actually, sorry, Paul actually gives uh, the name of Timothy's mother and also Timothy's grandmother. Okay, uh, Timothy's mom is Eunice and Timothy's grandmother is this person called Lois. Okay, and, um, and you know, in verse 1, uh, it's important. Uh, his mother, who was also a Christian, okay, was Jewish, but his father was a Greek. Okay, and so this is a very important thing. Uh, you know, there in the old customs, uh, okay, the Jewish people were actually not supposed to marry people outside of the Jewish race. Okay, and this could be a part of the reason why uh, Eunice, which is Timothy's mother, uh, okay, ended up in Lystra. Okay, she couldn't be around the Jerusalem, Galilee area. Lah. Okay, because she married an outsider. Okay, so maybe the Jews will be like, oh, memandang, like, okay, not an outsider. I mean, like, memandang Eunice, like satu outsider. Lah. Okay, but we find that at the time when Paul went back to the uh, Lystra, okay, the second time, uh, okay, uh, the family had already come to know the Lord. Okay, all the believers in Lystra and Iconia spoke well of Timothy. Okay, and so they were Christians. Okay, and as uh, we mentioned, uh, the important thing is his dad was a Greek. Okay, and his mom was a Jew who became a Christian. 
and we find that Timothy uh, had access to both cultures, which makes Timothy uh, like the perfect person uh, to follow Paul and Silas around. Okay, we were so Paul wanted to take Timothy along with him, so he circumcised him. A probable reason uh, why Paul wanted to take Timothy along was because Timothy had access to both cultures. Paul and Silas were both Jews. Okay, Paul and Silas were both Jews, so they really knew the Jewish culture well. So having Timothy along with them uh, would give them would give them uh, an insight, okay, onto you know what it is to be a Greek, okay, because Paul, uh, sorry, because Timothy grew up with a Greek father. Okay, but here is where the interesting thing happened. Uh. Notice that in verse three, yeah, uh, okay, we are talking about circumcision again, but the hal. You know, at chapter 15, uh, we were talking about the Jerusalem council and they repeated this in verse 4. As they went through the towns, they delivered to the believers the rules decided upon by the apostles and elders in Jerusalem. Okay, what were the rules? Do you remember? What was the decision of the Jerusalem council? You don't have to be circumcised, but these are the things that you are required to do. Who can remember? Can anybody recall? Are there how many? Uh, three or four? Uh, three. Uh. What's the first one? Oh, sorry. Okay, don't eat food offered to idols. Okay, number two. The first one is don't eat food offered to idols. Sec second one. Actually, the third and fourth is kind of the same. Now. Okay, don't eat blood. Don't eat blood or... The don't eat blood is always together with something. One. Okay, don't eat... Uh, meat from strangled animals okay and i went into a very long and scientific explanation the last time lah, because if you strangle the blood is still inside you know and it's not halal lah. okay the last one the last one is which is the most applicable to all of us today what are we supposed to avoid what were they supposed to avoid and also us today like this <laughs> what's the last one okay we have to avoid sexual immorality <coughs> Okay, so let's talk about Timothy's reputation. Huh? Okay, number one, we find that in verse two, all the believers in Lystra and Iconium spoke well of him. Okay, so that means, you know, they are macam disanjungi ramai lah. A lot of people really like Timothy and they speak well. Maybe he's very well behaved. Maybe he's very smart. Okay, he had access to both cultures. He is understanding of the Greeks and he also understood uh, the Jews. Okay, but he was not circumcised as a Jew. And this is probably quite interesting. Lah. Although he's a Jew, he was not circumcised, probably because he wasn't in he wasn't around Jews a lot. Okay, and probably because his father was a Greek. Okay, and so we find uh, that, or at least history tells us lah, that when he joined Paul, he was around late teens and early twenties. Okay, slightly older than all of you now. Lah. Okay, and we find that Paul, uh, in his letter in 2 Timothy, he calls my own dear and faithful son in the Christian life. Okay, because probably uh, Timothy was one of the first few people that uh, was that believed in the message of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, when Paul went to Lystra uh, the first time. Okay, so why did Paul circumcise Timothy? So this is a very important question. And uh, <laughs> those of you that... I prepared for the BK quiz. Uh, this you would probably know the answer to this. Uh, okay, because all the Jews who lived in those places knew that Timothy was a Jew with a Greek father. Okay, and to the Jews, uh, if you are, even if you are born from a Jewish mother, you are still a Jew. Okay, walaupun bukan bapa kamu yang adalah orang Jews. Okay, to the Jews, uh, as long as you have some Jewish blood in you, you are a Jew. And if you are a Jew, you have to be circumcised. So we are not really entirely sure why Timothy was not circumcised all this time. It could be because he was, you know, he grew up with a Greek father. So he thought, mm, mungkin tidak perlu. Lah. Okay, and so Paul wanted to avoid all these problems. They didn't want, hey, Timothy, kamu ni adalah Jew. How come you're not circumcised? Okay, as again, the idea of circumcision is still very important to the Jewish people. Although, okay, although the Jerusalem Council had already decided that, okay, those who are non-Jews, okay, the ketetapan is this, siapa-siapa huh? yang bukan daripada uh, 
Yahudi, okay, those who are non-Jews, you don't have to be circumcised. And so the problem comes with Timothy. Timothy is a half Jew. To the Jews, half Jew is Jew. <laughs> okay, a half Jew is Jew. They would consider Timothy to be a Jew. So in doing, so because of that, and because Paul wanted to take Timothy with him, Paul asked Timothy to do something that is very unusual, okay, which was to have him circumcised. Okay, at the age of you know, early 20s or late teens. It's a pretty painful thing <laughs> if you've ever gone through circumcision before. Okay, it's a pretty painful process, especially if you are much older. Okay, uh, uh, and I don't know, I, I don't know, I think in Malaysia, we, uh, if you are not a Muslim, uh, then you're not required to be circumcised. Lah. But in certain, certain countries, lah, like, uh, like for example, in the Philippines, lah, all the guys are circumcised. Well, majority of the guys are circumcised at a very young age. It is like a practice there, like macam satu amalan di sana, which has nothing, nothing really much to do with religion, but more on, you know, their culture. Okay? And if there anybody that is Filipino that is watching this, please forgive me or make a correction. Lah. But this is what I understand from uh, my Filipino friends. Okay? It is a culture for men there to, to be circumcised, but at a very young age, because it is less painful. So we need to imagine uh, the gravity of this situation. Tim Paul is asking Timothy to do something that is that is actually more painful uh, because he is much older, uh, okay, not when he was so young. But it is a very different issue uh, from the one that you know believers in Antioch, you know, those who are non-Jews. Uh, okay, Timothy was actually not required to be circumcised. Okay, so this circumcision, uh, if you think about it, actually Timothy doesn't need to be circumcised. Okay, because he's only half a Jew. But he voluntarily did this uh, to overcome any barriers to his witness for Christ. Okay, it is a mark of commitment. Okay, and the circum his circumcision, Timothy's circumcision, uh, will aid his acceptance by the Jews and provide full access to the synagogues. Okay. But how will the others know if he is circumcised or not? Yeah, I was actually going to go. To... <laughs> so, okay. So this one, I'm not really sure. Lah. Okay, maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> okay, so those of you who... I, I, okay, lah, fine. Lah. I'm speaking to 15 to 17 year olds. So I'm pretty sure that you know what circumcision means for guys. Lah. Okay, I guess. I guess. Lah, okay. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not laughing out of embarrassment, uh, but I find that every time I teach X uh, and I come to this part, uh, people will always wonder, you know, how, you know, Ethan, your question is totally, totally valid. Okay. I guess, yeah, like what Mordecai suggested, uh, maybe they did a spot check. Uh. <laughs> maybe maybe they pulled down his pants just to find out. Uh. I, I Literally, I have no idea. Maybe there is a certificate. Okay, maybe. Okay, maybe there, there is a certificate. That is, uh, you know, verified by somebody. Uh, that, okay, it's like, you know, your vaccines. Oh, sorry, none of you are vaccinated. Like, you know, if you are vaccinated, then you get a vaccine certificate. <laughs> okay, sorry, I hope there are no anti-vaxxers in this group. Uh. So, so, it could be that. Lah. Okay, it could be that. Maybe he got a certificate. Okay, or, uh, or the fact uh, that people knew Timothy. Okay, people knew Timothy. And, and because people in Lystra and Derby, uh, they knew Timothy, they would have known uh, that since very young, he was not circumcised, okay, for some reason or another. Okay, and circumcision uh, is something that, and I hope that I get this correct, uh, circumcision uh, is something that is witnessed by a lot of people. And, uh, it's not something that we want to witness, uh, but yeah, it is witnessed by people. Okay, they bukan satu private affair, uh, yang satu dua orang saja. No, it is witnessed. Uh, it is witnessed by people and, you know, the people that witnessed it uh, would have spread the news. Okay, because for a 20-year-old man uh, to be circumcised is a very, very rare occurrence. Most people will be circumcised at a very young age. Okay, so for a 20-year-old man to be circumcised, I'm sure the word would have spread uh, uh, by word of mouth. And I think this is the most probable answer for your question, like Ethan. Okay, they may have done a spot check, like what Mordecai suggests. Okay, there could be a, a certificate, but I believe uh, 
because of verse 2, lah, okay, verse 2, uh, all the believers in Lystra and Iconium spoke well of Timothy. Okay, and I sincerely believe that if they witnessed Timothy's circumcision, they would have also spread the news. Okay, because it is such a rare occurrence. Okay, I hope that answers your question. Uh, but I'm I'm also, yeah, I guess the spot check also wouldn't be that bad. Uh. <laughs> okay, but okay, but the thing is this, uh, Timothy was willing to do so. I'm very, very, I'm very, very intrigued uh, by this statement in this slide. Uh, okay, if you look, he voluntarily did this uh, to overcome any barriers to his witness for Christ. I think this is a very important thing uh, for us to consider. Uh. Okay, sometimes, uh, uh, and I think a few weeks before, I, I, I've actually shared this with you. Uh, um, sometimes we're very caught up uh, about, uh, you know, can we do this? Can we not do this? Is this a sin? Is this not a sin? But not everything uh, is, uh, is this a sin? Is this not a sin kind of situation? Okay, for example, uh, one of the biggest problems that, uh, that the people in the early church had uh, was this food sacrifice to idols. Even until today, Okay, even until today, let's say uh, if you like you go to a temple or you go to a Buddhist temple or something, right? Then you see this food that they offer. Okay. Some people uh, will not be comfortable with the idea of of uh, of eating the food that is, you know, like you know, you, like usually they have fruits like oranges, apples, uh, and things like that. Lah. Okay, or even rice or meat. That actually the food is offered to the idols. Okay, and a very common question uh, that a lot of pastors get uh, from their from their members huh, is, you know, are we not, are we allowed, are we, is it okay for us to eat uh, this food that is offered to the idols? And interestingly enough, this was a problem huh, in the early church. Okay, in the early church, in different, different books, lah, not in Acts. Lah, okay, but in different words, I think it's in, uh, I can't remember, I think it's in Ephesians. Okay, I think so. Okay, but one of the letters in Paul, huh, Paul addresses this issue. And, Paul tells us uh, that it is not so much uh, of whether it is a sin or not. Lah. Okay? Eating food that is offered to idols, is it really a sin or not? But the more important thing uh, is that if you eat the food that is offered to the idols and it causes somebody else to doubt their faith, uh, then you shouldn't do it. Kalau benda yang kamu buat itu, yang kamu rasa macam tidak berdosa bahkan, okay? tetapi ia menyebabkan orang lain untuk mempunyai perasaan ragu-ragu tentang keimanan dia then we shouldn't do it for the sake of the other person and this is what exactly what Timothy is doing Timothy actually doesn't need to be circumcised if you think about it, Timothy tak perlu pun okay, he doesn't even need to be circumcised but he voluntarily did it now for the sake of other people for the sake of other people so that other people can come to know the Lord Okay, because again, as I said, uh, the Jews have a very fixed mindset. They refuse to listen to people uh, who are not, you know, the same race or who are not of, <clears throat> you know, who are not circumcised like them. You know, because to them, these are very important things. So when Timothy does this, uh, he's saying, you know, hey guys, I am identifying with you, although I don't need to, you know, so listen to my message. That's a very important thing for us to learn, you know, uh, in, in our walk uh, with the Lord. Okay, don't, uh, of course, there are some things that are outright sin. Lah. Okay, this one we know. Okay, the same things that are outright sin. But some things are very grey areas. Okay, like food offered to idols. Can we eat? Can we not eat? Okay, I would stick with Paul's answer. If you eat the food that is offered to idols and it causes somebody else to sin or to doubt his faith, huh, then it is better that you don't eat. I mean, it's a small sacrifice on your part. You don't have to eat it. Okay? Uh, if it, you know, especially if it causes somebody else to sin. Okay? And so, because of that, okay, the churches were made stronger, okay, in faith and grew in numbers every day. Okay? So, uh, sorry, let me skip this. Huh? Let's go on, okay, to verse 6 until verse 12. Uh, no, you know what? Yes, verse 6 until verse 12. Uh, can I have uh, Sibyl and Yesavila for this, please? Uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, can, sir? Okay, can. Okay. They traveled through the region of 
Phrygia and Galatia because the Holy Spirit did not let them preach the message in the province of Asia. When they reached the border of Mysia, they tried to go into the province of Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. So they traveled right on through Mysia and went to Troas. That night, Paul had a vision in which he saw a Macedonian standing and begging him, Come over to Macedonia and help us. As soon as Paul had this vision, we got ready to leave for Macedonia because we decided that God had called us to preach the good news to the people there. We left by ship from Troas and sailed straight, sailed straight across to Samothrace, hmm. and the next day to Neapolis. From there, we went inland to Philippi, a city of the first district of Macedonia. It is also a Roman colony. We spent several days there. All right, great. So, let's recap where we are so far. Okay, there's a lot of places lah. Okay, in this one, but in this section, sorry, am I unmuted? No, I'm mute. Okay, I'm unmuted. <laughs> okay, so in this particular section, there are a lot of names of places, but the most important thing uh, is that they were at Troas. Okay, number one. Number two is where they had uh Paul had a Macedonian. Uh, Sorry, Paul had a vision, uh, okay, or a dream about somebody in Macedonia calling them. And this is, uh, you can mark this down in your textbook, uh, okay, mark it down and write it as the Macedonian call. Okay, the Macedonian call. This is a, chapter 16, verse 9 is probably the most important thing because of the Macedonian call, uh, because of the Macedonian call, okay, Paul step foot uh, for the first time uh, in Europe. All this while, uh, he has always been in the Middle Eastern area. Okay, uh, Samaria, Jerusalem, Cilicia, Antioch, all these are all Syria, you know, all Middle Eastern area. The Macedonian call uh, asked Paul to go over and start to spread the gospel into the continent of Europe. Okay, reminding us once again now of Acts chapter 1 verse 8. The ends of the earth is not just limited now to, you know, the the tempat-tempat di, you know, Timur Tengah sahaja. Okay, but it is literally to the ends of the earth. And Europe is the beginning of the ends of the earth. Okay, so 16 verse 9 now is a very important event. Okay, the Macedonian call. Of course, the names of places, other banyak names of places lah kan. Okay, so... We were at Lystra and Derby. Okay, this is where uh, Timothy was picked up. Okay, and then he passed on to Iconium. Uh, then wanted to go to Bithynia, but cannot. Wanted to go to Asia, Mysia, cannot. Sorry. Uh, wanted to go to... Sorry, uh, wanted to go to Asia. Sorry, wanted to go to Asia, and then the spirit said cannot. Okay, so banyak tempat lah yang dia boleh pergi. So in the end, crossed over the region of Mysia and ended up in... Troas. Okay, Troas is where the Macedonian call is. And after the Macedonian call, uh, Paul, okay, sailed, uh, okay, Paul sailed, went on a ship to this place called Neapolis. Okay, he passed this island. This is the island called Samothrace. Okay, all, you know, he's just passing. Uh, okay, but he went to Neapolis and from Neapolis, he went to the main city in chapter 16, okay, which is Philippi. Philippi, Philippi, I like to pronounce it as Philippi, but okay, you can pronounce it as Philippi if you want. Totally doesn't matter to me, as long as you make sure you get the spelling of the place correct. Okay, uh, I think in uh, in Bahasa Indonesia or Bahasa Melayu, it's called Makadonia, M-A-K-A, Bakan. I think that's the spelling for the Malay version. Okay, and Philippi is uh, F-I-L-I-P-I, -I, okay? So just be reminded, lah, okay, the English spelling is very important. Okay, so main event that happens here is Troas. Okay, and then after that, go to Neapolis and then we end up in 
uh, Philippi, Philippi. <laughs> okay, Philippi lah. So, uh, again, just to remind us of where we are, okay, Troas in Mysia, and then after that, uh, he went to Macedonia. Okay, so this is the uh, picture depicting uh, the Macedonian call. Okay, and we find that the first country in Europe uh, is in Macedonia. Okay, Macedonia, Macedonia. Lah. I think it's pronounced as Macedonia. Okay, so it's located in the present day Greece. Today, what we know as Greece, uh, it was first called Macedonia. Okay, Greece is actually under Europe. Okay, although they're literally just next to the Timur Tengah, makan. they're next to the Middle East, which is part of Asia, Asia today. Okay, but you know, Greece or last time known as Macedonia, okay, is in part of Europe. Okay, so it borders the Mediterranean and the Aegean seas. Okay, some of the chief cities in Macedonia, the Bandar Bandar Utama, will be Amphipolis, Apollonia, Beria, Neapolis, Philippi, okay, which is in chapter 16. Neapolis also is in chapter 16. And Thessalonica, which we will see next week, is in chapter 17. Thessalonica. Some people like to pronounce it Thessalonica. Lah. But you see uh, that now uh, the names of the places also have changed. Like, much like other tone lines. Uh, sounds very European. Okay, Neapolis, Philippi. Okay, sounds very uh, very European. Lah. <laughs> okay, the names. So Paul was summoned uh, by the man, the vision of the man in man of Macedonia to preach the gospel there, which we call the Macedonian call. Now, here's an interesting fact. The word Macedonia means burning or an adoration. Okay, there is a, like, yeah, there is a passion over there. Lah. Okay, when we're talking about uh, Macedonia. All right, let's continue. Huh? Shall we read from uh, verse, hold on, let's not talk about this. Let's go to verse 13. Okay, can we read from verse 13 all the way to verse 15, uh, LD? All three verses. Oh, LD. 13. Okay. Yeah, 13 to 15. Oh. On the Sabbath, we went out of the city to the riverside, where we thought there would be a place where Jews gathered for prayer. We sat down and talked to the woman who gathered there. One of those who heard us was Lydia from Tyra, Tyra yeah. who, who was a dealer in purple cloth. She was a woman who worshipped God, and the Lord opened her mind to pay attention to what Paul was saying. After she and the people of her house had been baptized, she invited us, come and stay in my house. If you have decided that I am a true believer in the Lord, in the Lord. and she preceded us to go. All right. Thank you. So, let's take a look at this. Uh. Thyatira, okay, where Lydia is from. Okay, here is an interesting thing. Thyatira is here, okay, which is a part of the Middle East. Okay, and Lydia is here in Philippi, which is a part of Europe. <laughs> but the interesting thing that we find over here is that Paul, okay, notice, uh, the first thing that Paul wanted to do was to go to a synagogue. Okay, remember in the first missionary journey, yeah, Paul's pattern is always this. He will always go and look for the Jewish people first to preach the gospel. Okay, and so uh, when he wants to go and look for the Jewish people, he will go to the synagogue lah, because that's where the that's where the uh, the Jewish people will be gathered. Okay, they are, they are like Saturday service or Sunday service will be there, okay, at the synagogue. But Interestingly, there was none, you know, you see, where we thought there would be a place where Jews gathered for prayer, but there was none, okay? We sat down and talked to the women who gathered there, okay? So, and, you know, normally Paul went to the synagogue, but evidently there was not a synagogue in Philippi. So, there may be Jews over there, but there are very few Jews, okay? Because in order to have a synagogue, uh, the rule is that you must have 10 Jewish men. And the fact that Paul was there talking to the women who gathered there kind of tells you uh, that in Philippi, there are not that many Jewish people. Okay, there are not that many Jewish men. Okay, and so what do we know about Lydia? Okay, number one, Lydia is from Thyatira, okay, which is, you know, in 
another province, not in Philippines altogether. Okay, and Lydia, one of the famous things about her that we know in the book of uh, Acts, okay, is that she is a dealer in purple cloth. Some, sorry, somebody wanted to come in. Oh, okay, it's Effie. Sorry. <laughs> okay, all right. <clears throat> so she's a dealer in purple cloth. She sells purple cloth, okay, or is a businesswoman. Lah. Okay, now she was a Gentile, okay, who worshipped God. Okay, I thought that she was a Jew. Or originally, I thought she was a Jew at first, but apparently it seems that she was a Gentile. Okay, she was a Gentile who worshipped God. Okay, and she was like, like very similar, lah, okay, like Cornelius, okay, a God-fearer. Now, the Lord opened her mind. We find uh, that in verse uh, 14, the Lord opened her mind to pay attention to what Paul was saying. Okay, and she became Paul's first European convert. Okay, so in the book of Acts, uh, there are many, many firsts. Okay, remember the Ethiopian eunuch? He was Philip's, <laughs> okay, Philip's gentile, eh, no. Yeah, Philip, right, okay. So Philip's first, gen Philip's first gentile convert, okay, was the Ethiopian eunuch. Cornelius was Peter's first gentile convert. Okay, and now Lydia is Paul's first European Gentile convert. <laughs> okay, not just a Gentile who is you know around the Jewish area, but a European okay Gentile convert. Okay, Paul's first. Okay, and so we find that she and the people in her house okay were water baptized, and she proved her faith uh, by inviting Paul okay and his companions to stay in her house if they had considered her a true believer in the Lord. Okay, but I'm always I'm always very intrigued with Lydia for two reasons. Lah. Number one, because she sells purple cloth. And uh, there was a time in my life uh, where I really loved the color purple. Okay, now I don't love it so much anymore. Lah. But I don't know how many of you here are fans of the color purple. <laughs> okay, but there was a time in my life where I really loved the color purple. So everything that I bought was purple color. Okay, don't kecam saya, okay? It doesn't mean that I like purple. Like, whoa, what is this? Such a girly color. No, okay? Purple color is a royal color. Okay, it's a very royal color. But this is the interesting, this is the other interesting thing that attracted me to Lydia. Lah, okay, was that she proved her faith. Ah. She made such a bold statement. She said, come and stay in my house if you have decided I am a true believer in the Lord. She wanted to really show that she believed uh, by inviting Paul and Silas. And at this time, okay, notice that the pronouns have changed to we. Okay, who is this we? Okay, it's Paul, Silas, Timothy, and Luke. Okay, Luke in verse 10. Uh, if you read in verse 10, Luke joins the team. Okay, Luke is the writer of the book of Acts. That's why in verse 10 you notice that the writing has changed to we. We, maksudnya, other Luke, this sana. So there's Paul, Silas, Timothy, and there's Luke. Okay, at this stage lah. Uh, and, sorry. Okay, so at this stage, Paul, Silas, Timothy, and Luke. And Lydia made such a bold statement. Say, come and stay in my house if you have decided I am a true believer in the Lord. And this is one of the things that to me uh, is so attractive about Lydia. Okay, because she's she really wants to show, okay, Paul and you know and his friends are uh, that she has believed in the Lord, and how does she show it? Uh? she shows it by being hospitable, okay. And because of that, okay, because of that, uh, Lydia's home became the center for Christian outreach and worship in Philippi. Okay, we will see this in a little while, but Lydia played such an important role. Okay, her home uh, became like the synagogue, the church. Okay, the center for Christian outreach and worship in Philippi. Her home, okay, ladies and gentlemen, because of her faith, uh, and she said, Come and stay in my house. Okay, because of that, her home became the church in Philippi, the first ever church in Europe. Okay, which which to me uh, is like wow, Lydia, such an amazing woman. Okay, she sells Popokov, she's probably very rich because she's a businesswoman. Okay, and yet uh, she was willing to turn her house okay into a church or into the center for Christian outreach 
okay, and a place of worship in Philippi. What an amazing testimony uh, it is, okay, for somebody who is a businesswoman willing to sacrifice her business. Uh, okay, we don't really know whether she gave up the business, lah. Okay, but you know that you know if she's doing the business from home. Okay, as many people are doing nowadays. <laughs> okay, if you turn your home into a place of worship, uh, you may lose business. You know, you may not like people be like, huh, Lydia now become Christian already. Uh, yeah, I don't want to buy the cloth from her. Uh, maybe I look for the purple cloth from somebody else. She took the risk. Okay, she took the risk, um, you know, by believing in the Lord Jesus and proving her faith, inviting Paul to come over, turning her house, okay, into the Christian, the center, okay, the center, the church, you know, where people will come to worship and uh, also share the good news. Okay, what an amazing testimony uh, by this lady uh, who was so full of faith you know, and wanted to believe in the Lord. Okay, <clears throat> all right, now let's carry on. And what I would like you to do is uh, this time, since it's such a long passage. <laughs> All the way until verse 40. Yeah? Okay, verse 16 all the way to verse 40. What I would like you all to do first is to read it through on your own. Okay, because after a while, we're going to answer this set of questions. Lah. There are 14 questions all together. Okay, so I'm not going to show you the question yet. I'm going to show you Lydia's uh, pretty purple cloth and her faceless face. Okay, <laughs> okay, but what I want you to do is to read chapter 16, uh, sorry, verse 16 all the way to verse 40. In 10 minutes, okay? And then after that, I'm going to divide your questions uh, according to, you know, see how long, see how we're going to divide the questions, okay? So take 10 minutes to read through verse 16 to 40. Make sure you know everything that's happening in verse 16 to 40 because very important things are happening in Philippi. Okay, see you in 10 minutes, huh? Okay, <laughs> 10 minutes up, huh? Okay, so if uh, if you look into our chat session, okay, I have already shared the link uh, to this gem board, okay, and <laughs> I have uh, shared the fourteen questions. <laughs> yeah, they're all together fourteen questions, uh, that I want you to answer and put it into this prison break, <laughs> okay, uh, this prison break. Let's try to fit all fourteen. Uh, use your stickers, huh? okay, guys. Use the stickers to answer, sticky notes lah, to answer. Then after that, you change the size. Lah. This prison break is a background, huh? so don't worry. So even if you, Instagram, sorry. Uh, even if you, let's say you write something, huh? okay, then after that, you put the this one on, the sticky note will go over the prison break. Lah. Okay, but uh, so yeah, so it won't, yeah, this, the prison break is a background. But try not to cover too much of the prison break because I find that it's so funny. Uh, when I was looking for a background, I was like, oh, it's so cool, prison break. Okay, let's call this section the prison break in Philippi. Okay, so, so let's talk about uh, question number one, question number one. Uh. Okay, how many of you here? There are nine of you here, right? Okay, so there are nine of you here and there are 14 questions altogether. Okay, so question number uh, one. <laughs> hold on, uh, hold on. Uh. Uh, Oh, okay, 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 fine. Let's do it according to alphabetical order. Lah. Okay, I think alphabetical order is just easier. Okay, so LD question number one, FE question number two, uh, Ethan question number three. Okay, Jericho question number four, Kimberly question number five, Mordecai question number six, Nicholas seven, Sibyl eight, Yesevila nine. Okay, <laughs> so nine first, huh? Okay, so 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So there are five more, right? Okay, so since there are five more, I'm going to ask... <sighs> this is so difficult. You know why? Because I have three from fours, three from fives, and three from threes. <laughs> hey, no, no, no. I only have two from threes. Oh, yeah, you're right. I have four. Wait, Nicholas, you're in form four, right? I always forget Nicholas from what? Yeah, I'm form four. Okay, form four. Huh? So there are more form fours here. Okay, fine. So let's have number 10. Uh, okay, number 10 is Effie. Sorry, number 10 is Effie. Number 11 is Ethan. Number 12, Jericho. Number 13, Kimberly. And number 14, Mordecai. Okay, so the form 3s and the form 5s, this time you will get two questions. Okay, the rest of you will get one. 
I mean, yeah, so like, praise the Lord, I'm from four, <laughs> I get one question. <laughs> okay, then uh, when you, this one, right, okay, when you answer, uh, arrange in order, uh, okay, uh, so uh, very good, write that list, Q2, okay, then the answer over here. Okay, then after that, uh, once you're done, uh, you can start arranging your sticky notes in order, uh, make sure you arrange one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, all the way to 14. Okay, so I'm going to give you 10 minutes to complete this. Uh. All right. Good, good, everybody. So, actually, this is not even the prison break, right? This is thrown into prison. We haven't even talked about the prison break yet, lah, but can lah. This is the story of the prison break. Okay, so let's take a look at the questions. Huh? The first question is, uh, where were Paul and his companions going when they met the slave girl? Okay, so where were Paul and Brandon going when they met the slave girl? The answer is a place of prayer. Lah. Okay, they were going to a place of prayer when they met the slave girl. I like the fact that you answered uh i think it's ld right i like the fact that you answered in full sentence okay that's a very important thing uh to inculcate okay what enabled her to predict the future she had an evil spirit and that's a very important thing about this slave girl we don't know the name of this slave girl and we will actually see another person uh, who also uh who also you know has this kind of uh, ability okay uh much much later uh, all right, and how did she earn a lot of money for her owners? She earned it by telling fortunes. Okay, and this was what she was shouting. These men are servants of the Most High God. They announced to you how you can be saved. So she was actually telling the truth. Very interestingly. Okay, she was actually telling the truth. Okay, but what Paul, what did Paul say to the Spirit? Paul said, in the name of Jesus Christ, I order you to come out of her. Okay, hold on now. Huh? No, oh, okay, fine. So, uh, you know, it's very interesting. Uh, and when we come to another story, okay, at another city uh, of something that is very similar, uh, we find that, oh, the way Paul responded now uh, was a little bit different in that time. Okay, we will come to that later. Uh. All right, question number six. As a result, what happened to the girl? The spirit went out of her at that very moment. Okay, very good. Number seven, what did the owners realize? The owners realized that their chance of making money off the slave girl who could predict the future was gone because she had no longer the ability to, uh, to you know, to tell the future. Okay, because Paul had already rebuked the spirit out of the girl. And so they, they were not happy. Lah. Obviously, they're not happy because, you know, when your business has gone down the drain, they were not happy. So what they did was, number eight, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them to the authorities in the public square. Okay, uh, so uh, very important. Okay, uh, that, you know, all this is happening that leads to Paul and Silas being in prison in Philippi. Okay, but question nine is my weird question now. To whom and where did the owners drag Paul and Silas to? Okay, they, so actually, uh, 8 and 9 are very uh, closely related. Uh, they were dragged to the authorities in the public square. Okay, and so what did the believers say to the Roman officials? And this is the very long, this is their accusation. Uh, look, listen very carefully. These men are Jews and they are causing trouble in our city. They are teaching customs that are against our law. We are Roman citizens and we cannot accept it. Now, if you have your textbook with you, I want you to highlight this verse 10 and highlight especially the words, uh, we are Roman citizens. This comes very important uh, at the end. Okay, so these people, these men who are making money off this the slave girl with the evil spirit. Uh, they are claiming, you know, we are Roman citizens. We don't want anything to do with these Jewish customs because, you know, they are melanggar kami punya adat, melanggar kami punya budaya. It goes against our culture. When in actual fact, uh, that was not even the reason why they were angry. The reason why they were angry was not that Paul was going around teaching, you know, Jewish customs. It was the fact that they lost money. Okay, they lost their business, uh, uh, because of what Paul uh, did to the evil spirit in the slave girl. Okay, so the accusation uh, against Paul was false. Okay, the accusation against Paul was false. Okay, but they had to do it uh, because they wanted to make sure that Paul and Silas, okay, and the whole gang, lah, okay, Paul and Silas, uh, they wanted to make sure that they were really thrown into prison. Okay, and they even were so smart, you know, they used this, we are Roman citizens. 
Okay, in a little while, we'll talk about what is so special about being a Roman citizen. Okay, in those days, being a Roman citizen uh, is like, wow. Okay, it's, there are a lot of privileges, okay, if you are a Roman citizen. Okay, question number 11. What did the crowd do? Okay, they join in on the attack against Paul and Silas. Any crowd yang macam tidak tahu apa-apa pun join saja. Okay, because, you know, this businessman, maybe this businessman were very influential. Okay, and so, you know, mereka kena hasut lah. You know, kau pun lah, kau pun, kau pun. Okay, so they also join and, you know, against Paul and Silas. And so what the officials did, okay, they did two things. Okay, number one, they tore the clothes off of Paul and Silas and ordered them to be whipped. Okay, then where did the jailer throw them into? The jailer thrown them into jail. Uh, can we be a little bit more specific about this, please? Not just in jail, huh? Uh, who is the Matatin? Uh? Sorry, I can't remember. Uh, I think it's Kimberly. Uh, yeah. Yeah, not just in jail, but... Even more specific. Be more specific. Oh, inner cell. Yeah, in the inner cell. Okay. So the inner cell, uh, okay, the inner cell... Uh, let me see, yeah. Uh, do you remember the picture that I showed you last week about, you know, the prison? Huh? The inner cell is like really, 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 really deep inside. Okay, it is like like the place where it is impossible to get out. But like if you were in an outer cell, you're pretty near the entrance and you're near the ground. Huh? Okay, so it's easier for you to get out. Huh? But Luke mentions huh, that they were thrown in jail in the inner cell huh, to show us huh, how, you know, how much huh, they wanted to keep Paul and Silas in prison and they not only stopped there they didn't just throw them in prison they fastened their feet with heavy blocks of wood okay and when i was setting the background for this uh, i found this very interesting picture uh, which i thought that i should show you not paul walker <laughs> Sorry. okay ah uh, look at this picture oh no 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 sorry okay just look at this picture i'm not going to set it as the background now uh. but look at this picture you know it is literally impossible uh, unless you cut off your legs. Okay, it is literally impossible uh, for Paul and Silas to get out. Okay, because their feet okay were fastened between heavy blocks of wood. Okay, and 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 it is in that situation uh, that Paul and Silas found themselves in. Uh. Okay, at this stage, yeah, uh, uh, I was also wondering. Uh, Okay, at this stage, I was also wondering where is Luke and where is Timothy because uh, we, 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 were gone. but suddenly the only people that were thrown in jail were Paul and Silas. Okay, so I guess that maybe uh, Luke and Timothy may have been somewhere else or they, you know, they, the people just didn't associate Luke and Timothy uh, with, uh, with Paul and Silas. Lah. Okay, but we know that Paul and Silas were the ones that were thrown into jail. Okay, now let's go into verse 25. Huh? Now remember the picture that I showed you about this? Okay, about midnight, Paul and Silas started praying, I mean were praying and singing hymns to God. Now I showed you this picture, okay, to show you uh, the position of this inner cell. Okay, very, 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 very inside. Lah. Okay, and you know, it's very difficult to get out, made even more difficult by the fact that, uh, sorry, by the fact that their feet were fastened. Okay, uh, by, uh, by blocks of wood. Okay. Uh, and, but the interesting thing is, okay, the interesting thing is this, lah, okay. They were praying and they were singing hymns to God. Okay, if you were thrown in prison, lah, would, you, <laughs> would you really be doing that? Lah? I mean, honestly, if you ask yourself, okay, would you be praying and would you be praying? Okay, lah, I guess praying can be, lah. But would you be singing? You know, would you be singing? Uh, if, you know, all your plans are, uh, so like you have this great plan, you know, want to go to Philippa and then have to go to other places. And then suddenly because of this, uh, the businessmen that were very angry at Paul and Silas, you were thrown into prison. And it looks like all your plans are, uh, have, you know, have totally been destroyed. Okay. If you were Paul and Silas at that time, uh, how would you be feeling? Uh, wouldn't you feel like disappointed? Like, hey, why is this happening? You know, but we find that Paul and Silas were not, they were not just praying, they were also singing hymns 
to God. They were worshipping God. And they were doing it around midnight, okay, which was pretty late at night. Okay, and there's a reason why Luke writes about midnight now. We'll come to that in a little while. So in verse 26, suddenly there was a big earthquake. There was a violent earthquake that shook the prison to its foundations. You can imagine the kind of earthquake that you know, Luke is talking about. Because for the inner cell, uh, for the inner cell to have all their doors opened, okay, it must have been a really violent earthquake. Okay? Shook the prison to its foundations, uh, sampai ke foundation. Okay, sampai dasar dia pun tergoncang. Okay, at once all the doors were opened and the chains fell off all the prisoners. Okay, what would Paul and Silas do during that time in between their capture until midnight? Okay, interestingly, uh, the question is, why didn't the earthquake come, you know, when uh, before midnight? Why did God choose to wait until midnight? Wouldn't it be, you know, the throw them in prison and kasi earthquake terus lah? Why was there a waiting period? We can imagine that, okay, we can imagine that Paul and Silas were probably thrown into prison sometime during the day, okay, maybe in the afternoon. And they spent, you know, those hours uh, inside the prison cell until midnight, okay, with totally no news, totally no word from God, nothing. Okay, they didn't even hear anything from God. And yet they were still praying and they were singing hymns to God. And only at midnight, Okay, only at midnight uh, did the earthquake happen. Okay, only to tell us this very important thing, which I will stress on as we talk about this later. Uh. Remember, uh, this thing happened at midnight. Okay, and the thing that we need to draw from this uh, is that we shouldn't be doubting God's timing. Okay, I think there is a song. Uh, uh, if you go to a BM church, you know this song. Uh, is, uh, Waktu Tuhan Pasti Yang Terbaik. I think that's the title of the songs. One of my favorite songs. Lah. Okay. God's timing uh, is always the best. Although, when waiting for God's timing, uh, we don't seem to think so. Okay. Uh, and, you know, interestingly also, it wasn't until Paul and Silas uh, were singing. Okay. And everybody could obviously hear Paul and Silas singing. Lah. Okay, it wasn't until they were singing uh, that the earthquake happened. So God's timing in all of this, God's plan uh, okay, in all of this uh, is always perfect. God's timing is always perfect. It looks to us, uh, like if you were Paul and Silas, it may look to you like, oh no, what is this God? Why are you doing this? Uh? Like, Come and get me out of here now. Okay, We want it now, now, now. We always want things very fast. Okay. The song tells us our long to Tuhan pasti yang terbaik. Sometimes God's timing requires us to wait. Okay, and what do we do while we are waiting? We follow the example of Paul and Silas. We pray and we worship God. We never forget God while we are waiting. It just because we don't get the answer that we want now, okay, doesn't mean that God is not answering. It doesn't mean uh, that we can forget about God. Oh, kalau Tuhan tidak mau jawab, saya tidak mau layan dia lah. <laughs> okay? No, it's not that. Just because God hasn't answered, doesn't mean that we should stop worshipping Him. Doesn't mean that we should stop praying to Him. Okay? Instead, praying and worshipping Him uh, reminds us to trust God and His timing. Okay? And so, once the earthquake happened, we find that the jailer woke up he saw the prison doors open and he thought that the prisoners had escaped. And because he thought the prisoners had escaped, and this is at night, uh, guys, remind you, uh, this is all at midnight. He couldn't see a thing and he probably thought, okay, if I was a prisoner and all the doors were open, okay, you know, the prisoners would have probably escaped. If you were a prisoner, surely you would have broken prison. You would have prison break already, right? Okay, and that's what the jailer thought. Okay, and so he pulled out his sword and was about to kill himself. Now, we need to ask ourselves why he would do that. Lah. Now, every jailer was made responsible for his prisoner under the same penalty to which the prisoner himself was exposed. So if all the prisoners escape, he must lose his life on the account. 
dying by your own hands rather than dying by others was considered a noble custom. Better to kill yourself than to have, you know, than to be punished by others killing you. Okay, so uh, you remember in the story of Peter when he was when he escaped the prison because of the angel, what did Herod do? Herod ordered the guards to be killed because that was the acceptable punishment at that time. If you cannot take care, if you cannot do your job properly, okay, you will be punished to death. And that's why the jailer pulled out his sword and he was going to kill himself because he knew that Mimang Tiada Chan, if all the prisoners escape, right, it is my fault. Although technically, if you think about it, now, it is the fault of the earthquake. Lah. <laughs> okay, how can you control the earthquake, right? But in those days, no. Even the earthquake, so you are responsible for the earthquake. Okay, so he was going to pull out his sword and he was going to kill himself. Okay, and this is where the amazing thing happens. Paul shouted at the top of his voice, don't harm yourself, we are all here. We find that even after the prison doors open, we are all here, you know. None of them escape. Okay, none of them escape. They could have been gobsmacked, amazed, dumbfounded, stupefied, awestruck, flabbergasted. Okay, they didn't run. You know, they maybe uh, they were so amazed that wow, this guy's singing uh, mereka menyanyi sampai gempa bumi. <laughs> okay, take your pick lah. Okay. They may they yeah, they, they were probably so amazed and they were probably so stunned uh, that the singing of Paul and Silas <laughs> have caused an earthquake <laughs> that they forgot to run. <laughs> Whenever I think about this, I feel like it's so funny. Lah. You know, people when they you know when they experience earthquakes, uh, the first thing they do is they run, you know. Okay, the first thing they do is they run. Lah. So I imagine uh, that if I was a prisoner at that time, uh, I would have imagined wow, gosh, these guys are singing with such a loud voice. Okay, and then suddenly the earthquake happens. I have a, I have a neighbor. This is so bad, but I must tell this funny story. So I have a neighbor, my 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 neighbor in another block. But he, actually his block is, his lot is just next to mine. Uh, so there, there was a time, uh, <laughs> there was a time uh, at, 12 a.m., almost 12 a.m., like 11 something lah, at night, you know. Okay, my neighbors decided to have a karaoke party. <laughs> okay, my neighbors decided to have a karaoke party lah. And you know, uh, when they have karaoke parties, uh, mana ada orang yang karaoke party kan, just the laptop and then dia punya mic kecil-kecil macam ni saja. No lah, right? Sure, they will be singing at the top of their voices. The music will be very loud. If you've ever been to a karaoke party, uh, you know what I'm talking about. Lah. Okay, the music is very loud and this is at 11 something at night. Lah. Okay? <laughs> and to make matters worse, they were not singing very beautifully. Lah. So it was really torture to the ears and it's not nice when people want to sleep. Lah. <laughs> Okay, but but okay, I'm sharing this uh, because I'm imagining uh, the situation in Paul's prison. Okay, the situation in Paul's prison uh, where, you know, this Paul and Silas were singing and they were singing loudly. Like, obviously, they were singing loudly until the earthquake happened. Okay, so the my main question, uh, among all the many questions that I want to ask, uh, it would be when I go to heaven, I would want to ask Paul and Silas, Paul and Silas, what do you think? Uh, did you think that you were singing very beautifully or was everybody asking you to shut up? <laughs> Don't sing because it sounds so horrible, you know? Because for us, uh, like, okay, so the running joke is like, kalau suara kamu sumbang, makan, then, you know, it will rain. <laughs> so, can you imagine what kind of voice you must have uh, in order to cause an earthquake? Uh? Okay, obviously we know, obviously we know that the earthquake was caused, the earthquake was God sent. Okay, God caused the earthquake. Lah. It's not because Paul and Silas were singing so horribly or so wonderfully that they caused the earthquake. Lah. Okay, but the amazing thing is they didn't run, you know. The prisoners didn't run. They stayed there. They were like, okay. I mean, you know, people sing until earthquake. Lah. Okay, how can you, like, you know, not run? And how can you run? You know, it's so amazing. It's so like, wow. Okay. But the jailer called for a light. Now, I want you to highlight this part. Now, that the jailer then only called for a light. 
That means when he went to prison, uh, when he went to the prison and he saw the prison doors open, he immediately assumed, okay, he immediately assumed that the prisoners ran uh, without even looking into the prison cell. Okay. And so the other question is, since it was so dark, uh, how did Paul know what the jailer was doing? Okay. This slide tells us to guess yourself, lah, but you know, we probably think that it is because of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit helped Paul to see uh, that the jailer was going to kill himself. And that's why he shouted, don't harm yourself. We are all here. Even though Paul knew, sorry, even though it was in the dark, okay, even though it was in the dark, Paul probably couldn't see the jailer. But he knew that the jailer was going to kill himself. Okay, because only then uh, the jailer called for a light, rushed in, and he saw all the prisoners and Paul and Silas, and he fell, trembling at the feet of Paul and Silas. <clears throat> okay, then he led them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Okay, obviously at this point in time, uh, the prison gardener must have, must have been feeling a lot of things. Uh. Number one, he felt very relieved that his life is no longer in danger because the prisoners are still there. When none of the prisoners ran. It is a miracle in itself. Okay. Number two, he probably was still very stunned because of the earthquake. Maybe in that area, they don't experience earthquake much. Look at the violence of the earthquake. The earthquake shook until the prison's foundations. Okay. That's how amazing uh, this earthquake was. And he probably felt very scared. Okay, scared for his life because he may die because of the prisoners ran away. Scared for his life because of the, the, the hugeness of the earthquake. You know, but when he realized that he was safe, his life was safe, he was safe from dying and he was safe from the earthquake. Huh? He fell down. He knew that this is something to do with Paul and Silas. You know, and he knew that it must have been something to do with the God that they were singing hymns to. And so he asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Okay. And Paul and Silas answered, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. Okay, you and your family. Okay, do you find the jailer's response weird? Okay, well, how would you have reacted then? Okay. He must have known. He must have somehow known, but he didn't respond at first. Okay, maybe he heard them, maybe he heard the slave girl, okay, but or maybe he heard the singing of Paul and Silas. But he knew that there was something special okay, about Paul and Silas. Okay, so much so that he asked, What must I do to be saved? Okay, and at that very hour of the night, at midnight, uh, okay, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Because remember, uh, Paul and Silas were not just, their clothes were not just taken away from them, they were also whipped. Okay, we saw this in verse uh, verse 22. They were all whipped. Okay, so the jailer took them back, washed their wounds, and he and all his family were baptized at once. Okay, remember that this was in the middle of the night. It's a pretty odd time to baptize someone at that time. Lah. Okay, but God's timing. Okay, God's timing is always amazing. Okay, no matter how odd it is uh, to baptize someone at midnight, okay, it probably happened at the best time possible because it needed to be dark. Okay, remember why I mentioned why did God wait until midnight? Okay, why did God wait until midnight now uh, before the earthquake came? Because God probably wanted it to be dark. Okay, so that when Paul shouted now. Uh, don't harm yourself, we are all here. The jailer would immediately know okay, that Paul knew what he was going to do. Okay, and that's why the jailer responded the way he did. Okay. So interesting, uh, it's interesting that you know when we talk about God's timing, uh, we always think about just Paul and Silas. You know, but God's timing was also equally important uh, for the jailer. It is because of God's timing Paul and Silas escaped, okay? And number two, the jailer and his family all came to know the Lord, okay? If this had happened much earlier, okay,
today, if this had happened much earlier, and this one I'm only speculating at this point. Lah. Okay, saya hanya mengagak saja, saya tidak berapa tahu. If it had happened a bit earlier, okay, the jailer wouldn't be so astonished, maybe. Maybe by the earthquake, yes. But not at the fact lah, that none of the prisoners ran, and it was dark. Okay, it was the best time for the prisoners to run because it was dark. If it was daylight now, the prisoners may not have run. But it was dark. The prisoners could have run, but the prisoners did not run. God's timing. Okay, it's amazing, amazing, amazing. Okay, and so he took Paul and Silas up to his house and gave them some food to eat. He and his family were filled with joy and they now because they now believed in God. Okay, although they were given authority to do divine things, they're still human. Okay, so the jailer took care of Paul and Silas because Paul and Silas led the jailer to believe in God. Now let's look at what happened the next day. Okay, this is this is why I said this is why I was talking about the Roman citizen thing just now. Huh? Okay, so the next sorry, uh, you know what? I'm going to read this. Huh? The next morning, the Roman authorities sent police officers with the order. Okay, let those men go. So finally, they just say, let those men go. So the jailer that had just, you know, believed in the Lord Jesus Christ told Paul, the officials have sent an order for you and Silas to be released. You may leave then, go in peace. But Paul was not happy. Okay. We were not found guilty of any crime, yet they whipped us in public and we are Roman citizens. So this is the first time, underline this line, people, or highlight this in your book. This is the first time uh, that Paul is claiming his Roman citizenship. Okay, then they threw us in prison. And now they want us to send away secretly. <laughs> okay, if I was Paul, uh, I would have said this, uh, you know. We were not found guilty of any crime. Yet they whipped us in public. And we are Roman citizens. They threw us in prison. And now they want to send away, they want to send us away secretly. Okay, I would, if I were Paul, I would be very angry. Can you imagine this not at all and the exclamation mark away? <laughs> not at all. Okay, the Roman officials themselves must come here and let us out. Wow, ko kasi malu saya, tetapi I'm actually a Roman citizen like you, you know. You know, you embarrass me in public and now you want us to leave the prison secretly. Ah. No way, way. <laughs> no way that's going to happen. Okay, if you want us to leave, you come and let us out. Okay, sebab, you know, it is, a, okay, I will come to this in a little while. Huh? So 38, the police officers reported these words to the Roman officials. And when they heard that Paul and Silas were Roman citizens, they were afraid. Okay, now let's talk about Roman citizenship in a little nutshell. Huh? Okay, we will talk this a little bit more uh, much later. But when we talk about Roman citizenship, I want you to take a look at footnote F prime, page 60. Okay, page 60 in footnote F prime. It says, according to the Roman law, a Roman citizen could travel anywhere within the Roman territory under the protection of Rome. He was not subject to the local laws unless he consented and he could appeal to be tried by Rome, not by local authorities when in difficulty. Public beating for a Roman citizen would have been illegal let alone beating without a trial. There was no trial. Tiada perbicaraan langsung. Terus kena tangkap, terus kena pukul. Okay? So to beat and imprison a Roman citizen without a trial uh, was a serious offence. That's why they were afraid. Okay? Because they knew, they didn't realise that Paul and Silas were Roman citizens. They just assumed that because Paul was a Jew and Silas was a Jew, they just assumed that Paul and Silas were not Roman citizens. Okay, but when Paul claimed Roman citizens, and this is where Paul is very smart. Okay, he could have, he could have much earlier on uh, claimed that he was a Roman citizen. Kan? Bila dia first kena tangkap kan? Dia boleh-boleh juga cakap itu. Hey guys, I'm a Roman citizen. Why are you doing this? You shouldn't be catching me. But Paul did not say that. Paul, like God, uh, waited for the right time waited for the right time to claim his Roman citizenship. Okay? And in doing so, uh, interestingly, lah, okay, if Paul had claimed his Roman citizenship very early on, uh, the jailer would not have come to know the Lord. Right? 
the jailer needed to experience the earthquake and Paul being able to see him in the dark, I mean, not really see him in the dark, but to know what he was doing in the dark and the fact that the prisoners did not run even though it was dark. All those things needed to happen in order for the jailer and his whole household to be saved. Okay. And so only at the right time, uh, Paul claimed his Roman citizenship. Okay. Of course, he had to go to prison for it. Okay. But it was because of God's timing. Okay. It was because Paul was wise. Okay. He knew exactly when to claim his Roman citizenship by trusting God. Okay. It was because of this you know, that the jailer and his whole family got saved. Okay, and so we find that because Paul claimed his Roman citizenship, verse 39, they went and apologized to them. Then they led them out of prison and asked them to leave the city. Paul and Silas left the prison and went to Lydia's house. Okay, Lydia, who we saw in the beginning. Okay, just a side note. Uh, I went on Google just now during the break uh, to find out what is the meaning of Lydia. I wanted to share with you. So the name Lydia means beautiful one or noble one. Okay, and I guess that's why. La. <laughs> okay, so it's a very beautiful name. La. Okay, beautiful one or noble one. And so at Lydia's house, okay, there they met the believers. Remember, Lydia's house at this time had already become the church. Okay, the place where people were gathered. Okay, spoke words of encouragement to them and left. And in chapter 17, we learn that after Philippi, they went to this place called Thessalonica. Okay, which we will look at next week. Okay, so a word of encouragement for all of you. Okay, even as we end our class for today. Yeah, okay, uh, and this also has to do with your assignment for today. Okay, when Paul and Silas were thrown in prison, it looked as if their plans were destroyed and God was not helping them. But God was actually working according to his timing. My question for you, for your assignment this weekend, uh, is what does Paul and Silas' experience teach you about trusting God's timing and how can you or how do you relate this uh, in your own life okay uh, as somebody who is uh, now going to be 41 years old <laughs> okay I I mean there are, I can share many many experiences lah, okay about when I thought that you know I couldn't wait for God's timing but at the end of the day uh, I realized that hey you know what <laughs> At the end of the day, I should have trusted God's timing. Some of it was regret and some of it was relief. Okay, because when we trust God's timing, uh, okay, it is the best. Okay? We live in a culture uh, where we want everything cepat cepat. Right? We want everything now. We turn on the TV, we just, you know, with a click of a mouse, uh, we can watch the next video. With a click of a mouse, we can play the next episode of a Korean drama. <laughs> okay, sorry, uh, maybe I should. Like how many of you, if you watch Korean drama, right? Would you prefer to binge watch everything, like episode one until episode twenty-four or sixteen, okay, all together? Or are you that kind of person uh, that very patiently every week you will wait for one episode, okay? Me, unfortunately, I don't like to wait. <laughs> so if I know there is a drama coming, I will wait until all the episodes are over, then I will watch. Okay, but some people uh, they don't mind, you know, they don't mind watching week after week after week, because they believe that. That makes the drama um, that more exciting. <laughs> okay? But we live in a culture where we want everything now. We want everything fast. Okay? We want everything, you know, with a flick of a finger, with a click. Okay? We want everything now. And it is getting more and more difficult for us to be patient, to wait for God's timing. And so I want to encourage you, uh, my friends, that whenever you're faced with a situation where you're required to wait, you know, where you are praying for something and you're asking for something uh, and God doesn't seem to be answering. Okay? Remember the story of Paul and Silas in prison. They had that amount of time uh, in the prison uh, from daytime until midnight. Okay? And they just waited. They waited and they waited for God's timing. And while they were waiting, uh, they prayed and they sang hymns to God. They worshipped God. As you are waiting for God to answer your prayer, okay, let me remind you that let us not forget that God is working. And because of that, okay, we worship and we continue to pray to God faithfully. 
just like Paul and Silas. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we are thankful for your timing. Uh, we are reminded of the song uh, where you remind us, O oh Lord, that your timing is always the best for us. For many of us, and including myself, uh, as we are waiting on things, as we are waiting for decisions to be made, uh, as we are waiting for something to happen that hasn't happened yet, we pray, O oh Lord, that uh, in your own time, you will answer our prayers. In your own time, O oh Lord, you will make... Uh, uh, you will, uh, you will make, uh, you will let your will be known uh, to all of us. I pray for the students here who are listening to this today, that Lord, you will also show yourself real to them uh, in whatever decisions that they have to make, uh, in whatever, uh, uh, in whatever challenges that they may face, where they are required to wait. Give them the patience, O oh Lord, to trust in your timing, and above all, help them to remember, just like Paul and Silas to pray and to worship you. Because, Lord, you are a God that is faithful and you are a God that never leaves us alone. So be with us, O oh Lord, uh, even as we close our study for today and encourage us with your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.